Welcome to a well-designed business with your host, Luan Nigara. Luan has a lifetime of experience building a multi-million dollar business with her husband and cousin, and she knows the challenges you face in your interior design business. Luan brings you real-life answers to your most pressing problems, as well as practical strategies to explode your interior design business. So, let's get to the business of interior design. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Power Talk Friday on a well-designed business. I have Madeline Sklar with me today. Hi, Madeline. How are you doing? Hey, Luann. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yes. So I have to say, I think this is like the, I know for a fact, you're the very first guest that we're going to discuss Twitter with. And it might be only the second time we've ever uttered the word on this show in almost a year and a half. I know we mentioned uh, our mutual friend, Nicole Holland from Business Building Rockstar Show. She did a summit and and had a segment, a feature on Twitter. It was probably you that was the feature, right? <laughs> Actually, I wasn't, but oh. she has invited me to come be okay. on the next summit. So I'm okay, really excited. Okay, there you about go. That. Right, right. So, but here's the thing you are an expert on Twitter. You are the host of Twitter Smarter, a Twitter chat, and the podcast. Okay. And you have the weekly social ROI chat. You blog and you create and you speak and you teach courses at MadelineSklar.com. And you are a business coach, consultant, and Twitter marketing expert. So, Madeline, you're a special force there to be reckoned with. In the world of Twitter and social media and marketing, I understand that you're known for being the number one social media influencer in Houston, which is a city of 2 million people. So that's a pretty big moniker to have on your shoulder. So good for you on that. And I also, in my research, found that you have been founding online communities since 1996, which almost seems like, well, did they have those things then? <laughs> I, it's hard to believe, but yes, I, I got my start in 1996. And back then, the internet was new and I saw the potential of this being a great way to connect people. So I started building communities. That's amazing. That's literally, I mean, we use, you know, in business, we throw the word visionary around a lot, but that's truly visionary. I have to say, Thank you. I mean, I really appreciate that. No, I mean, honest to God. I mean, in the other stat that I noticed was that you've been blogging since 2000 and even that blogging since 2000, I remember my youngest, she is, um, she was in college in two th she started college 2007 and she's such a great writer and she was, you know, putzing her way through the first year of college. And I can remember the spring of 2008 at dinner, she went to school at Georgetown university and we were at a nice little Georgetown pub, her and my husband and myself, and she's searching and she's like, Oh, I can't find my passion and all this stuff. And I said to her, why don't you start a blog? And both her and my husband looked at me and I was like, it's a thing. It's a thing. Blogging is a thing. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I'm like, Google it. You'll find out, you know, but that was <laughs> eight years after, you did it and we thought we were so cutting edge <laughs> right yeah blogging has been around for quite a while so I just have this knack for being an early adopter to yes. just about everything tech yeah you really do and it's so funny that you just used that phrase because I'm in the middle of listening to the audiobook with Simon Sinek uh, the why at the start with why and he mm -hmm. just went through that whole the four different classifications of people early adopters and the other three I never remember things I have to reread it a second time but the four classifications people who can see it right like you do very very early and then you have people that he one of his descriptions was you know they only give up the flip phone when they actually stop making the flip phone <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> so right. from the scale of the visionary like yourself into the person who's like the last to get to the party with everything with the technology or whatever the thing is. So anyway, so listen to me. I am so impressed by your, your really your visionary skills. And so we're going to transfer that today to this podcast here and teach my designer buddies out there a little bit about Twitter. And I know that I'm interacting with maybe three, four people from the design community on Twitter, but it's not our wheelhouse. At least it's not my experience in this 18 months in this industry of, you know, podcasting with the interior designers here. It's really, they're all over at Instagram, number one, and then secondarily at Facebook. So what I find, Madeline, is that 
They're at Instagram to feature their work and to see the work of the people who inspire them. And they're on Facebook for the learning and the community and the helping and where they're real with each other and uh, say, how do I this and how do I that? So Twitter's sort of an uncharted territory here. And I was so happy that you accept the, accepted the invitation to be on here. So tell us a little bit, like, why should we care about Twitter? What, what, what do, do is there any reason for ESD even to convince my buddies out there to like move over to the Twitter pat platform? Right. Well, you were talking before about Instagram and Facebook. And if an interior designer had come to me and said, Hey, Madeline, like, where should I be? I would definitely tell them to be on Instagram because what you're doing is very visual and Instagram is such a great place for that. And then you talked about Facebook is a great place to go for learning and connecting. And it is because Facebook groups are such a powerful way to connect with people and and meet other people, like-minded people. But here's what's interesting. Twitter is is like the two. You can go there and connect with like-minded people. You can share your work. It's a very visual platform. Um, people just think of it as the 140 characters. It's a lot like text messaging, but you do have the power to, to do videos, to do photos. You can even do live video with one tap. You could be doing a live video right now, oh. which most people don't realize. So I've made it my mission mm-hmm. over the years now, Luann, to, to, teach people, show them all the different things you can do with Twitter. And I'm always uh, so surprised to find that people do not realize there's all these things that are, that are like right there in front of them. It's true. I mean, I, I would say to everybody out there that I'm on Twitter because it seems like what you're supposed to do, right? Right. (laughs) I'm also on Twitter because anybody who is a loyal listener to the show understands that I have a social media team on Retainer. And so there are certain things that are automated uh, that what we do. So the podcast, Mm -hmm. I supply the social media team with with all the information for the upcoming episodes. And then they format it and then they schedule it to whatever device they're using, Hootsuite or whatever. And so it constantly is putting the show out but when you interact if just I'm going to just say to anybody if you're interacting with me on Twitter that's me so there the social media that's where it stops for what happens what I find is that okay great my team is pushing out the content but unless I'm actually going to come to the party and have some conversations it's sort of like just content for content's sake it seems like to me um, would you agree with that it's like one thing to just put it out there but if I'm not going to come and engage what what's what's the value right right and and the thing is about twitter like with any other social network out there engaging is what is where the magic is Mm. that's really the magic sauce is is getting on there and engaging with people like when i look at your twitter you're just pushing out information. Yeah. You're just sharing information yeah. about the podcast. You're sharing, you know, YouTube videos that that you've added. Um, so you're doing a very one way street with right. this, which is what a lot of people do because we're all busy, right? Like, how many hours can we devote to this every day when we're doing twenty other things? So, um, so ske- scheduling, automating what you're doing. That is a good tactic, and I do recommend that to people I work with, depending on what it is you're put, putting out there. But you made a great point. When you're responding, like when there's a reply, it is everybody knows that is coming from Luann. That's not coming from your team. Right. That's coming from you, as it should be. But when I look at your Twitter, I don't see a lot of engagement. No. So it really tells me that you're just you're scheduling stuff, you're putting out content, but you're not engaging with people. And so really what you want to do is make a strategy of spending a little bit of time each day, reaching out to people and just connecting with them. And, uh, you'll be amazed at how many people are out there on Twitter active that are in your industry that are out there tweeting constantly where, you know, you could connect with somebody that could help you with your business. They're out there. Mm. So what I always advise is you got to get on Twitter and do a little bit of listening, you know, see where are the conversations? What are people talking about? So many people come to me and say, Madeline, it's a ghost town. There's just nobody out there talking. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, not really a ghost town. You know, you've got just, you know, hundreds of millions 
uh, people out there actively engaging. So uh, you can connect with people. It's just knowing where to go find them. And so uh, I have this little thing I put out called my Twitter secret sauce. <laughs> and it's, it's just some bullet points of like, what are some things you could do on Twitter every day where you could turn this around and start getting results and start meeting people and actually enjoying Twitter. You know, a lot of people come to me and they're just, they're like, I don't get it. It's not something I like. And then I give them some tips. I, sh I walk them through how to do some of this. I talk about the secret sauce and then they start applying it and they're really wowed by it. So let me kind of give you a little rundown of some of these things and we can sure. talk about it. You know, first and foremost, and this is with any social network, but especially uh, with Twitter, you want to be consistent. You know, you want like you're being consistent on your Twitter because you have tweets going out every day and they're, but they're scheduled, but at least it's consistent. Mm -hmm. So people that come onto your Twitter know that you're active just because there's consistency there. So that's really important. And you want to tweet every day. You want people to see that, yes, you've got tweets out there every day, you're active. So they know that if they reply to something, they're going to hear back from you because they see that you're active. And I always say, get out there and tweet and schedule out like what you're doing three, four, maybe even five times a day and just get yourself immersed into it. And then what you want to do is go through your notifications every day because that's where people are responding to you where they're putting your Twitter handle and, and trying to have a conversation with you. And so uh, I find that some people that are not really active on here, they tell me they're not looking at the notification. So you want to start going through that every day so you can keep an eye on it. And maybe you already have it set up to uh, automatically uh, send you an email or, or send you a little pop-up notification on your phone every time you get a notification. So you just want to stay on top of that because you don't want somebody tweeting you and that's where it becomes the ghost town because they're not getting a response. Right. So it's really important to do that. Another thing to do is a Twitter list and Twitter lists is a great way to organize. And so many people tell me that they're not familiar with the Twitter list. Is this something you ventured into and use yourself? Never heard of it until I researched you. <laughs> Interesting. You know, there, I, there's two things yeah. I never heard of in Twitter is Twitter list and Twitter chat until I was researching okay. you. Yes. And those are, those are the two things next on, on my list here. Okay. So let me, t let me talk a little bit about Twitter list. So Twitter list is a way to organize. So you have a place on your Twitter here where you can go add a list and a list can be anything you want it to be and it can be public and it, or it could be private. So I'll give you some examples. So a very common example would be to make a list of competitors. So that way you can see what is your competition doing on Twitter? What are they talking about? What exactly are they up to? And the beauty is you can make this list uh, private. So that way is for your eyes only. And I always recommend that everybody has a competitor's list that's private, just so you can see what are people doing in the industry. And then on the flip side, you can make one of like all the rock stars, all the superstars in your industry that you love and respect and have a list of them because those are people that you would probably want to like and retweet and have a conversation with. So I would definitely recommend going in and setting up these two list, one of the competition and one that's for the industry rock stars. And just start spending five or 10 minutes a day just seeing what are people talking to in your about in your industry? What are they saying on Twitter? You'll be really surprised that there's some really great conversation going on. And this is your opportunity to jump into the conversation. So you see a tweet that looks interesting, hit the reply button, give your two cents. And before you know it, your notifications will start blowing up with all these people talking to you okay, through Twitter. So let me ask you a couple of questions. First of mm -hmm. all, now you just piqued me because I have had notifications where it said so and so added you to interior design list, so and so added you to yes. women marketing list. So that's people that have their own private list of people that they want to follow. But because they didn't make it private, I got notified that I got added to their list. That's a public list. So, so, 
when when they create a list and they made it public and they added you, you're getting the notification. So only for the public list. If they make a private one and add you to it, you're not going to get the notification. Right. That's the beauty of being able to create a, a, a list of right. competitors or th- or anything that you want to be for your eyes only. I mean, there's I would, a, plenty okay. that we could do. Okay. Yeah. What I never understood was what that list was that they added me to it and where was that list? Like I would be like, oh, right. where's that list? Do I have to know about that list? What am I doing on that list? Should I interact <laughs> on that list? But that's a list for their personal use. So that, And so what happens when somebody has that list, when they load up their um, tool Twitter each day, it automatically shows them the news that happened first with the people on their list is, or they get the notifications from the people on their list. Is that the point of having a list? The, the, the list is, is a, accessible to them through their profile. They can go on there and by going to the list, let's say they have one of the, the industry rock stars and you're on that list along with some other people they added, they can go to that list through their Twitter and just see what's being tweeted. And it'll be the, out of that group of, let's say they have like five people on that list and you're one of them, mm-hmm. whatever you guys are tweeting that they'll be able to see most recent at the top and they can scroll down and see what is everybody talking about. So it'll always be the most current at the top. And because it's public, you can go see it. Anybody can go see it. So they created that for everybody to see. Now, had had it been a private list, you wouldn't have known about it. Right. And they go to the same place. There's a place on all of our Twitter profiles where we can access our lists. And they can just go in there and just for their eyes only see that same list. Now, what I would like you to do the next time you get that notification, and for mm-hmm. everybody listening, same thing. When you get that next notification, you've been added to a list, click on it because it will let you click on it and go take a look at it and see what is this list about? Who else is on it? Here's an interesting thing. You can subscribe to that list. So they created it. They added you. You go over to it. You'll see. You can, you can look and view it and see all the tweets in there of whoever. And it might just be five people they added. It could be 500. Okay. But you can subscribe to it. So the beauty of that is they did the work. They mm-hmm. put. To, they basically curated a group of people to Better, look at yeah. on Twitter. Right. Because here's the thing: when I look at your Twitter profile, you're following two thousand people. That's a lot, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're following people, your news feed on Twitter. When you click on home, that's your news feed. That is everybody you're following, and that's mm-hmm. going to be a lot of people to look at. So the Twitter list is a way for you to instead of having to look at that huge list is you can just zero in on just a group of people you want to look at on Twitter. Okay. So, so I can, it's one. almost like organizing the wide world of Twitter according yes. to my interests. So one group exactly. of people, like, cause of the 2000 people I'm following, however many dozens are interior designers and others are just maybe motivational speakers. Others might be women entrepreneurs. Others are teen entrepreneur groups, whatever sure. my interests are. Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Your interest, your interest, but also curate it for your business. So right. if what you were to go to my, right. exactly. So if you were to go to my Twitter profile, you're going to see that I have one that's public called my favorite podcast. And I just one day wanted to put together a, a public list of my favorite podcasts. Okay. Uh, you know, I went on Twitter and searched for podcasters that I like and made a list out of that. Um, but then I have a bunch of private ones that are just for me where it could be things like um, not just the people that are like, that I view as competitors, but uh, maybe I want to make a list of my super fans. Like who are the people that talk about me all the time? I want to make a list, but not really for everybody to see, right? Because it's just something I want to look at. So you could come up with lots of different ways. Maybe you want to have a list of your clients, but you don't want everybody to see it because it's really just for you, but you'd like to keep track of what they're saying on Twitter. Um, That could be another example. There are some really good articles out there giving examples of different ways of using this. I'll have to get that to you that you can uh, share in your show notes. Uh, But Twitter lists, best way to organize. So I definitely suggest giving it a try. But definitely the next time you see one. And here's another just little item uh, about this that I definitely want to mention. You've probably noticed with some of these lists you've been added to where some of them are just plain, like it probably just says interior designer. But you might have one that said, 
interior designer superstars, like something that really right. grabs your attention. And so this is a great tactic that you can use for your own list. So here's an example. Um, several years back, I started creating a list of top industry social media marketers that in my eyes, I thought were the, the, the leaders. And at first I made it private because I just felt like it was just for my own purpose. I didn't want to share it with everybody. As I was building it, I realized I was curating a really great list of people. So I, I decided to make it public. Now, up to that point, whoever I added did not get a notification. Mm -hmm. But once I turned it on to be public, anybody I added in the future would, would get the notification oh, okay. that they were added. But I wanted to change the name. So instead of it just being, I just called it social media. Well, that made sense to me being private. But now that it was public, I thought it'd be boring just calling it social media. And when people got a notification, I added them, I wanted it to grab their attention. Yeah. So I renamed it to social media smarties. Oh, that's and fun. I yeah. just thought that was a yeah, I thought that was a fun way to be a little bit more attention grabbing. So you can call your list whatever you want. There is a character limit. Um, I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. I think it's maybe 25 characters. It's not a lot of space, but you want to be creative with it and not be too. I mean, if it's for just your eyes only is right. private. Different story. Sure. Keep it, keep it, keep it short, boring, whatever. But <laughs> when you're your public ones, make them fun. So that way you'll get, you'll get more people interested in that when they see it. And then the ones you, the people you add to it. Okay. Very interesting. I, it is something that I've never understood what it was. Cause I have, over the months been added to many lists and I thought what is that <laughs> okay cool okay so now but the thing is our goals for Twitter are inherently different than our goals for these other platforms particularly Instagram and Facebook isn't that correct Madeline well it all boils down to what are you trying to do like you know this is marketing so who are you trying to connect? Are, are you just wanting to share your information, promote your business to try to bring more business in? Are you trying to uh, connect with other people in your business to collaborate? Like there's so many different ways to market your business. So it boils down to what exactly are you trying to do and who is your audience? You know, who's out there that, you know, are, are you just trying to find um people in your city? Are you more of an international business? You know, who, who is what we call your avatar? Who mm -hmm. is that, that customer that you're seeking out and where are they on social media? Where can you find them? Mm -hmm. Now, another thing with Twitter that is really fun are Twitter chats. And this is a great way to connect with people. Have you gotten on a Twitter chat? No, you been no. That? And that's the thing. I mean, I, this was the second item that in doing my research to meet you today, I was like, what's a Twitter chat? <laughs> so well, I hadn't heard yeah. of them and I don't know what they do. And I, I didn't want to read too much on your site because I wanted to be surprised. You wanted to learn. <laughs> yes. Um, Twitter chats are so cool. So we all know what a hashtag is, right? You okay. have the pound sign and a word or words together, no spaces. And we use that for searching. And we do that on, on, on Instagram and we do it on Twitter, not so much on Facebook. It never really took on mm. uh, Facebook very well. People on Facebook were kind of against it. So it just didn't work out, which is fine. But on Twitter, we use a hashtag for to, to have a Twitter chat. So um, and it can be just anything. Uh, I'm sure with interior designers, I am sure in your industry, there's there's I'm, I'm sure there's at least several, if not a lot of Twitter chats out there. So the way it works, the best way to explain a Twitter chat, it all revolves around a hashtag. So I'll use my Twitter chat as an example. <clears throat> and hopefully this will make sense. So I came up with a hashtag when I decided to start this chat. I started this particular chat two years ago and I came up with the hashtag Twitter smarter. And I felt like that says what it is. I, mm. I want to help people become smarter on Twitter. So Twitter smarter, one word, that's the hashtag. And I came up with a day and time and I said, okay, every Thursday at one o'clock Eastern, if you go to pound Twitter smarter, I'm going to have a conversation and you can come join the conversation. And that's how you get a, you know, a group of people to come together to chat. Wow. And it's all through tweets that are 140 characters long. Now, some people go, wait a minute, how do you have a conversation <laughs> when all I can do is 140 characters? Well, that's where you get creative okay. and you can have a lot of fun. So, um, 
it, it starts with having the host and they're the ones that lead the chat. And sometimes it's just a topic and we all have a conversation around it or there's a guest and there's a Q and A and you can participate by asking the guest questions or answering the questions that are being asked to the guests. Like everybody's just invited to come take part. It's so much fun. It, it usually runs for an hour. They're usually weekly and usually an hour, but some are not, you know, you have to kind of check and see what's out there and how they run it. But that is a typical scenario of a Twitter chat. And the beauty of this is that you can make amazing connections by spending one hour on a chat. Yeah. So for instance, with mine, because mine is all about learning how to utilize Twitter, we share Twitter tips, uh, Twitter tactics and ideas. Um, I thought, this is really interesting. When I launched it two years ago, my thought was I wanted to help like small business owners, entrepreneurs, startups, people that were maybe not using Twitter very much, but wanted to learn how to utilize it. And I really thought that's who the audience would be. And it ended up being more of like just social media marketers, people like me, but, <laughs> but those that are starting out, like people that are not quite at my level, but they aspire okay, to be. Right. And it has been really interesting. Now, of course it's open for everybody because Twitter's public. So anyone here listening uh, as well as yourself, Luann can come on this chat, come be a part of it. Um, it's for everybody, but it's interesting how some chats really, you know, bring out a very specific group of people. So what I would do for your industry, um, the best thing, cause I'm not sure, um, if there are any, I'm not sure of, of, of a specific Twitter chat for interior design, mm. but by just doing a simple Google search, type in, uh, whatever the topic or industry and then put Twitter chat on the end. So by putting yeah. interior design, Twitter chat into a Google search, that would be the best way to start some research to see what's out there. And if there are chats, see what, you know, who's running them, when it, when is it going on? But here's the thing. Anyone can start a Twitter chat. Right. You can start your own. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. And, and this is a great way to get seen and heard and be seen as an industry leader. So here's a, here's an example of that. So a colleague of mine started a Twitter chat about a year ago and she's real big on Snapchat. So she thought, why don't I start a Twitter chat that's all about Snapchat? Mm. So she called it chat snap. So you take Snapchat and turn <laughs> the words around. So, which is really cute. Right. Uh, I love when I see people get really creative like that, but that's <laughs> it, just a chat. She just decided to start. She decided to be the leader. And now before this people, people didn't really know who she was. She wasn't like an industry leader. She was very up and coming, but now that she's been hosting this chat for a year, she's really gotten well known and people are starting to see her as a Snapchat expert. So hosting a Twitter chat is just a great way to really get seen and heard and be seen as a leader. Okay, so now I'm thinking about translating this to the interior designers that are listening. So we would think about home decor and we would think about interior design and maybe we just start to put some of these searches in, like you said, Google, just to, you know, like we always do. We sort sure. of, you know, sniff out our competition, see what they're doing. Not that a chat is competition, but you know what I'm saying. And just as like you said, see if it's happening, if it's out there, but then if somebody is a color expert, for instance, you know, they could maybe cultivate a conversation with homeowners out there about picking paint colors for everything from their front doors to their laundry rooms to what, you know, the ceilings or the moldings or the types of paints or something like that. So that's what you're saying. You're like, just start a, something that an interior designer in their wheelhouse, their knowledge base that they could share yes. and then just week by week week try and build that that awareness and that following of those people that are there and I guess because you know five or six years ago we probably could not have it would have been like well why bother because I might build this whole following and two people you know might be in my my media 25 mile area and everybody else could be all over the world but now many designers are going into e-design and they are designing for people virtually so particularly an interior designer that is entering and has a e-design practice I would think this could be worth their one hour a week is the point right because 
because right. we all have to talk about what's worth our time too. And sure. as you said, Instagram is so slam dunk for our industry, and even my own. Like you said, you it's if if my thing were not automated, and if it weren't included in my social media package, I would not have a Twitter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because and I, I'm sitting here now in one day with 13 notifications to my Twitter, and on one hand, I feel like oh my god, I'm ignoring my people. On the other hand, I'm I promise you because I really am not in you know doing anything other than like you said a one way street pushing. I guarantee right. you when I go into this, this is probably other podcasters that I've been on their show, they've been on my show, and we're all retweeting the same stuff over and over again because I have not built that that community there. I have not built any relationships there other than the relationships that I have already built in my business or in the podcast. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm oh, yeah. totally here guilty of it, but it's sort of like the conversation on Instagram is becoming more and more every day that that's, you know, it, it's, it reminds me, everyone listening, of Amber Lewis. If you remember Amber Lewis, this, just for your information, Madeline, Amber Lewis is a huge design, started as a design blogger and um, has, uh, I think, 340,000 followers on Instagram and she's a quite an accomplished interior designer yet she's only in business about 10 years. I mean she's a young woman really and she described how the beginning years the literally hours she spent interacting with people with the blog and with her Instagram account and different social media following and and I I can see that that's what it takes because I, every day, every month for me, it's growing the number of people. So it used to be like three comments on a post and now then it went to fit 10. And sometimes I open up my thing at the end of the day and there's 27. And, you know, it, unlike Twitter, Instagram, I have been taking care of that and nurturing that. But, you know, I'm opening my eyes a little bit. Maybe it's uh, it's just another way. And, and it's it comes down to what do you want out of it? Like, like you said, right. what do you want out of it? So let's just say that somebody out there is is convinced that they'd like to put their toe in the Twitter water and they would like to maybe cultivate some national and international relationships to build up an e-online des- e uh, business. And there's probably other goals, but that's the first one and the most obvious one that comes to my mind. What, what are some of the basics? How about a Twitter profile? Are there do's and don'ts on what we should have in a Twitter profile? Uh, you know, something like that. Absolutely. And and that's, that's what I wanted to talk about next is, is exactly that. Like, you know, how are we presenting ourselves? How are people seeing us on Twitter? So you want to start with having a great profile. It, it needs to be professional. It needs to be compelling. It needs to get people interested in you. So uh, you want to have a great profile picture and that's the square image. And I'm all about branding all your social media so that there's consistency. So like, you know, if you were to go to Starbucks anywhere on social media, you know, with Starbucks, you know, it's the brand, right? We all identify with their logo and their colors. And so you definitely want to do that with all your social media. So make sure your Twitter is matching the way you're doing that on Facebook and Instagram. So use that same profile picture that's on your Instagram for your Twitter, the square image. And on Twitter, you get to have a, what we call a header photo at the top. So it's a, a large image that goes all the way across the top of your page. And it's, it's a big size. It's 1,500 across by 500 tall. And you want to use that because it's, it's kind of like this real estate to promote ourselves. So mine is like big and bold with my name. It says social media power influencer. I've got blogger, podcaster, Twitter, smarter, chat host. I want people to see this and very quickly know exactly who I am and what I do. So you want to think about what can you put on your header image to really stand out and be bold because it's a big image that you can put there. And then your bio is extremely important. Uh, you get 160 characters and you want to use all that space as much as you can. You don't want just a one-liner. Some people like to be a little cutesy and put some one-liner that doesn't really tell us about them. Mm -hmm. And you know, People have short attention spans when they're on social media and they're going to like just pass you over. They're not going to even look at your profile. They're not going to follow you if you're not 
being very clear. So I definitely want everybody listening to go do what I call an audit on your Twitter profile. So you do an audit, go look at that bio and see what it says and what can you do to make it be compelling to the point that somebody's going to click over to your website and mm. go learn more. Okay. So you want to really think about that. And uh, one thing that a lot of people tell me they don't realize they can do is in your bio, you can link to a website, you can put a hashtag in, you can link to another profile. So there is a place when you're when you're putting together your profile, and you can go and hit the edit on the page and make make your changes. There is a place for your .com. So you definitely want your main website .com. But let's say you've got something on sale and you want to promote that. You don't want to change your .com. I mean, you want to leave your regular homepage there. But in your bio, you could put a Bitly link, you know, to shorten it and put that in there. You can, you can change this anytime you want. It's always in real time. So I might have a sale today. I want to put that in there, put a link to it to make it very easy for people to get to. And uh, maybe tomorrow I need to change it back. And so we have that capability of, of being able to change this. So it's very important to have a really, really strong Twitter bio. When was the last time you changed yours? Luanne. Well, mine right now is very ADD. I'm looking at it as you're talking about it. So I did change it about two months ago to be Luann Nigara, as opposed to it was Window Works. It was called Window Works. But I'm looking at it now and I'm like, yeah, but I still have my Window Works logo and my Window Works team there. <laughs> so what I, I know what I need to do. I What I need is two Twitter accounts. I need one for Window Works and one for Luann Nigara. Um, but the thing about, so I did change it and I did change the, uh, right now it says host of a well-designed business podcast, business talk for interior designers, window works for custom window treatments and awnings, because that's like how you have to really be very concise. And I did change that because I listened to a podcast. I can picture his face. I can't recall his name right now. Ugh, that's going to annoy me. But, and he really gave some very specific tips for the, the profile on what to say there. And um, so I did change it in the last two months, but I am okay. scared to death to separate them because I can barely keep up with communicating with people on right. one. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work. And yeah. that's the thing you have to ask yourself, you know, and I'm sure other people listening are thinking the same thing. Is it worth having two because that's double work? Right. So um, what you could do is put your photo, your headshot photo in, in the, in the logo. square image there yes. for the logo because it does have your name on the profile now. Right. So it had Luann. Nagara, um, where you're combining, but like, you know, you're showing you, right. You're showing off you right. and your bio is still about your business. And that is totally fine. And that keeps it where it's just the one account and not having to do the double work. You could change the, the header image at the top and have something that maybe says everything. You get your graphic designer. That's what I do. I just have my graphic designer make something really nice and attractive. What most people do is they just put up a photo mm -hmm. and a photo can be great, but it doesn't really say anything. It doesn't tell me much. I see a photo of you guys, but it, it, it's not really drawing me in like, okay, what, what, besides what your bio says, it is not telling me enough. Now you could put some text over the photo. You can overlay some text that has more information. Um, but it's something you definitely want to look at. Mm -hmm, so, uh, mm -hmm. definitely, you know, definitely the call to action today is for everybody to take a look at their profile. Right. What can you do to improve it? Uh, do you have two accounts? Can you consolidate it into one? Or maybe you do need to add a second one for you and one for your business as separate. Yeah. Well, and it's funny for, cause for me, it's really two businesses. It's not like one is Luann and I'm talking to my personal friends. Do you know what I'm saying? The right. one is, is sure. representative of the podcast and the other is of Window Works. But they're co-branded and co-joined too because you know, we're, it's all, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's it a lot. It could go either way. It, it could go either way. Yes. Now, one thing I want to mention that I love that you're doing is that you have on your profile at the top a pen tweet. Did you have you did you notice that that no. you have that pen tweet? Oh yes, I so, do notice it. What did so? Uh, oh, so that's probably tweet. my team did that. I don't think I did. Well, yeah. That. <laughs> so a pen tweet. Well, you're gonna love this. So a pen tweet is a way to really 
showcase a tweet and it stays at the top of the page. So oh. everything, whatever is current is going to be below it. So this always stays at the top. So right now is, is spotlighting, uh, I guess this is a recent podcast episode. Yes. Episode it's today's nine. episode with Joe Cariotti. Yes. Oh, well, the day that we're recording Joe Cariotti is an, is a uh, glass blower designer maker that has a line of glass that is uh, specific to curated And so that episode is live today as we you and I are speaking. Great. Okay. So they're, they're using the pen tweet as an opportunity to keep that one at the top. So whenever somebody comes over to your page, that's the first thing they're going to see, whether it's on the browser or on their phone. And, and here's, here's a great little tip I do want to share. You can only do this from your browser, but when you're on your browser at twitter.com, at the very top, uh, there's a little navigation bar. And on the right side, there's going to be a little photo of whatever your your uh, profile picture is so you click on that and it gives you a menu of some things and one of the items in the menu says analytics and I want everybody to go look at their analytics because this is going to show you how many tweets you've done in the last month how many impressions have you've gotten how many mentions you know that's somebody putting at and your Twitter handle and like saying something to you. But what's really important on here is it's going to show your profile visits. That's how many people came to your Twitter page. And you're going to see that, you know, you, huh. if you've been really working your Twitter and being active, your number could be huge on there. And that's why it's important to have a pinned tweet because you're, you're bringing traffic over to this page. That, that tweet's going to be the first thing they see. So that this is why a pin tweet is such a great idea. So if you for those that are listening that don't have a pin tweet, look at your profile. If you don't have a pin tweet, go through your Twitter, find something that's like or, or even just do a new tweet, but something that promotes your business. Maybe you have a sale. Maybe there's you know somebody you want to spotlight, you know, with yours, uh, Luann, you're, you're spotlighting, you know, this new episode, right. uh, something that, that you want to pen. And it's really easy to do because when you're uh, looking at the tweet, there's a little pull down menu to the right. And when you click on it, it opens up a whole, it's amazing how many little menus are all over Twitter. Well, it's true. Uh, and, and I'm going to tell you what, this is like sort of interesting because I did this while you're talking and I've had 595 profile visits to our profile page in 28 days. <laughs> it's sort of like Luann, pay attention. <laughs> I mean, it, it, right. I, I mean, that's, I that's would have said to you know. probably five people went <laughs> like, right. Right. So, I mean, I have to say, I, look, I know that, you know, people like yourself and, e you know, even people that are way less qualified than you, but way more qualified than me probably would look at that and think 595 is nothing. But for a platform that I am not paying attention to and I am barely interacting on, I think that's pretty crazy. And that just really sort of says to me, hmm spend some time there maybe right would you agree exactly. i mean 595 Absolutely. in 28 days yeah, I, you know here i'm on amazing. instagram for hours and hours a, a week and i'm wondering if i could find that analytic it's you know what i'm saying it's like what if it's completely reversed what if most people are paying attention to me there you know what i mean right that's right. pretty so funny uh, so I recommend checking your analytics on your Twitter about once a month. More, more is fine, but but you know keep tabs on what what's going on with your analytics because you may be in for a big surprise yeah. with that. Yeah. I, so and well, I just, and let me yeah. tell you, you know, to to motivate you with this. Now I'm a power user. I mean I I'm all in on Twitter. <laughs> like Twitter's my thing. When I go look at my 28 day summary at the top, oh, you want to know imagine. how many profile visits? How, oh my god. Twenty nine thousand. Twenty nine thousand five hundred. Whoa, 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 whoa! It's, That's it's, it, amazing. It's motivating. Like it, yes. it makes me wild every time I see those numbers. It's like what? So like, okay, I got to have a really good pin tweet at the top because, you know, I'm getting a lot of traffic here. Right. Um, so yeah, definitely look at your analytics and see what kind of traffic you're getting, whether you're a power user like me or right. like what you're doing, Luann, You're 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 tweeting. You're getting some stuff out there, but you're not super engaged, but I well, would but love the thing to is, I'm telling engaged. you, I'm owning this. This is a one way street and that is not the way you get engagement. I know that right. that would be like me having this podcast every week and not talking about the things that designers are interested in. It's like talking about, you know, whatever. And so the thing is, 
that's what's so remarkable. It's something that is literally the stepchild of my social media, that the only thing that happens is whatever is automated by the team. And right. about every three days, I will look at my notifications and I scroll them. And if it's my people and friends that I've made acquaintances through the business, you know, usually it's the Power Talk Friday people, let's be real. They're the ones who are more on Twitter than the interior designers. You know, I'll do a, I'll do a like, I'll do a requote, I'll do a whatever, but it's not like Instagram where I would feel mortified if I put my head on the pillow at the end of the night and didn't look to, look to see which or who, what interior designer out there had a comment about something that we did today. I would feel like I left my friends behind at the party, you know, like without saying goodbye. And But Twitter, right. I'm like, whatever, I'll see you in four days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm done. I'm tired. I'm, you know what I mean? And so for, for that's what's remarkable to me. And I have to say, and that's what, that that is sort of what your point is, is that there is a whole thing that you can cultivate there. And I do think it starts with coming up with a little plan. Um, I think just like anything else, I mean, we've talked about Madeline on Instagram. We talk about interior designers that have said, well, what do you do when you don't even have a portfolio? How do you get started on Instagram? Because that's where all the design stuff is happening. And we've had a couple of guests uh, on the show that have said, like Laura, I'm thinking of Laura Lochran out of California. And she basically, and also Lynn, uh, Lynn Leonidas, Lynn K. Leonidas did the same thing. They will very carefully curate photographs of other designers' work, always crediting, okay, and always saying, but they only post work that reflects the type of work that they also do and want to do. And so for a, a casual Instagrammer who's, you know, looking through the feed, the work catches their eye. And then, of course, the, 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 the disclaimer is there that I'm admiring the work of fellow interior designer XYZ or whatever. But the point is, from a social media standpoint, it creates a body of work. It creates a feed that's beautiful and lovely to look at. And so that's an actionable way to build an Instagram following. And of course, you have to complement it with all the hashtags and all the other things that we've talked about. But I think for the Twitter, it's sort of similar. It's, it's, of course, you're not going to be, you know, it's, it's not exactly the, the principle isn't the principle is the same, but the, 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 um, carry out of it is, is not exactly the same, but this, what's same is figure out how to utilize this. If you're interested right. in it, you don't do it like I've been doing it, where it just has somebody else does it. And every third day you say something. So, but I can see what I'm like, I literally, honestly, if I had opened that, that up and I saw two profile visits, I'd have been like, well, of course I've done nothing to earn any profile visits. But I have right. to say that really does sort of show to me that there is a potential audience out there for what it is that our content is putting out there as as our company, because we are putting out both content for window works or window treatments or awnings, and of course the podcast. So something's resonating with somebody if some if five hundred and ninety five people in twenty eight days have clicked on our profile. So well, you're doing what I was talking about, my secret sauce. You're being consistent mm -hmm. and you're tweeting every day. You're ske they're scheduled, but yeah. you're doing those two things. And if you're consistent and you're tweeting every day, you, people are going to see that and they're going to connect. Right. Now, if you go a step further and start going on Twitter chats or just go find people in your industry and just send them tweets and just start right. a conversation you will be absolutely amazed right, at what right, happens. Right, right. It's very, it's really, I, I think it's very interesting. It's like, I think we all have to always, at the end of the day, figure out what we have time and energy for, because at first and foremost, we're running businesses. You know, you happen right. to be lucky. Your business is doing this. <laughs> exactly. I know. I love it. I get, I get to do this as, as a living. So. Exactly. The rest of us, we have to do other things for business first, and this should be sure. things that supplement it. And that's really the choice that I have made over these last several months, especially as I've seen the engagement go up on both Instagram and Facebook. I would, I have friends friendships there now where I would feel like a real son of a gun if something went two or three days without a, a comment. And the good thing for me is the two or three people that I'm thinking of that I have friendships on Twitter are also on Instagram. So as a matter of fact, it's so funny, so funny because Kylie, she first reached out to me um, on LinkedIn. 
which is funny because I go in waves on Twitter where I'm paying attention and where I ignore it. When I run out of bandwidth, that's the first thing that gets dropped from my daily events, okay? But Kylie actually reached out to me on LinkedIn, but I heard her first on Twitter. And so I, you know, this is maybe going back seven or eight months ago, and I was like, oh, she keeps talking to me. She keeps interacting with me, and I was going back and forth with her. And literally after we were friends on Twitter for like three months, I happened to check LinkedIn because that's my other stepchild of social social media. I went and I was like, Oh my goodness, Kylie, you reached out to me like six months ago on LinkedIn. I had no idea, (laughs) but we had long since connected on Twitter. So I was like smart for you lady to look for me in more than one spot. (laughs) Right. Exactly. So, but it's a lot. It's a, it's, you know, we all have to figure out what we can do best, what best serves our business. But, you know, we hadn't talked about Twitter as a marketing tool for our business. And I think that, you know, basically what you're saying is that if you're going to do it, figure out what your why is, what you what your goals are for it, how you want it to work for your business. You're saying that we have to be consistent. We have to tweet every day. These are things that help to build our um, profile f- uh, uh, views and so forth like that, um, that we need to go through these notifications every day and respond to the people. We can create our Twitter list. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, And I just remind everybody that you can have a private list of your competitors or a private list of anything you want. Maybe it's just an interest that you don't want the whole world to know about. Um, Or it's um, a public list where you add people to it and particular, you know, attention should be paid to making it a fun name list. I have to say that does work because not that I knew what it was. Now I have to go back and look, but I've been added to lists like like you said where you're kind of like huh I'm on that list what's that mean <laughs> you know like you know like <laughs> right? you know you're like, so you will get the attention of somebody that you're trying to get their attention I didn't happen to know what right. to do with it once it happened but <laughs> it is a, a good sort of uh, vehicle like you said you know secrets you know superstar interior designers or whatever you put somebody to and then um, to the the Twitter chat is an interesting thing and I my brain's got a click a little bit more on how a designer could utilize that to gather a following of potential clients from a Twitter chat. I mean, I even thinking about off the top of my head, just something that says something about online design, right? Even if it's just interior design online, hashtag interior right. design, something that indicates to the person out there that could be a potential interior design client that this is what they're going to find in this chat. And then maybe each week you share the principles of the way and how you successfully do do online interior design for people. Because I would think that a certain amount of people probably have some anxiety around that. You know, their younger crowd would be like, hey, let's do it on online. But me, I'd be like, wait, you're going to design my house and you're in Arizona and I'm in Canada. Like, I don't know about that. So if somebody every week was having a Twitter chat, just saying, this is how I do this and this is how I do that and answering questions, that's a way that somebody could build possible client base. Would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's cool. Okay. Right. I have to give it some more thoughts, some other ways that I think it might work. And and of course, be interesting to know what the designers are thinking. If they're having ideas right now, they were like, Luann, what about this? You didn't think of that. (laughs) Exactly. Well, I always recommend to go on some Twitter chats just to see what it's all about. So because I'm not sure what's out there for the industry, I put together a list that are specifically for social media and for marketing. And so if you want to learn more about Twitter, my Twitter Smarter Chat might be helpful. Yes. Um, there's some out there that are for bloggers, a lot of them that are for marketing and, and for business. So uh, there, is a, there is a link on my site, madelinesclar.com slash chat list, and that will take you to a page I put together with just just a variety of Twitter chats by day, so Monday through oh. Friday, and uh, you can check them out and maybe find something interesting. But at minimum, just go on a few and just just to learn what they're all about. And that way it kind of gives you you know some idea of how you can use this to meet other people. Now, the last thing on my Twitter, my Twitter Smarter Secret Sauce, it was so great, Lillian, because you were naming all the things we discussed that specifically from this secret sauce. The last one is engage, engage, engage. Right. Because, right. you know, you're doing doing everything right the, except that. so now now you're going to do some twitter lists now you're going to go check out some chats 
the engaging is yes. is what's missing. And then when you start doing some engaging and then you go back and look at those analytics, mm-hmm. you're going to be completely blown away. But here's a strategy. And this is something you can do. It's something that everyone listening can do. Just start with just five minutes a day. We could all set aside five minutes a day and right. just go on Twitter. Now I find it's fastest on mobile. I mean, I can just be yes, out and about. I definitely. Yeah, maybe I'm mobile. stuck at the grocery store waiting in a long line. Yes. I pull out my phone and I just get on Twitter and go see what everybody's talking about. Now what you could do is, um, start with, make a list of like, who are those industry leaders, right? And just for five minutes a day, go on one of their Twitter profiles, whoever, you know, that you've come up with on your list, go to their profile, click on their followers, click on the list of followers they have and see who's following them. And when you look at that list, you'll probably find people that you would want to follow and then go reach out to them and right. start a conversation. So like, for instance, when I'm on yours, Lillian, and um, I see at the top, I just followed you. So I'm at the very top. But um, <laughs> there's one right next to me that says interior design tips. And it's like, oh, well, that might be interesting for the, the industry. So I can click on that. I can go follow them. I could start a conversation, just send them a tweet and say, hey, at it's the, the designer talk. That's theirs, the designer talk. So I say, hey, at the designer talk surfing around Twitter and found you love what you're doing. What's new? Yeah. I mean, just come up with something to try to start a conversation, um, for five minutes, just, just go find people to follow in your industry, do a couple of tweets to just be a conversation starter, you know, and, and from there you can just start building off of that. And I think you'll see very quickly that this can be a great way to be a part of a community that's out there or even start your own community. Okay. I love it. I think that it's awesome advice. It's de- it's definitely something to think about. And, you know, it's another, you know, avenue for our businesses to, you know, get our name out there and get our products and our services out there and, and get engagement. I love it. I had my eyes open, I have to say. I knew that Good. I was to, I knew that I was the girl at the party who was standing there not talking to anybody. I mean it's not like I didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> I just was right. like, what why do I have to be over there too? You know, I was like, okay, my social media team is feeding it there. Good for them. You know, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's interesting. So I really do appreciate you so much coming onto the show and sharing your advice with us. Tell us one more time the website and how they access all of your information. And I think that's really cool. So what you're saying that one list is literally just a resource for people to what are the some of the the more well known chats and the different things that are happening on the day. So just like a TV guide for chats. It sounds like what you put together. Absolutely. Love it. Absolutely. I was frustrated that there really wasn't a list out there that made it easy to go find the chats in my industry. So I thought I would just create my own. Okay. Uh, so that's what I did. So yeah, it's on my website, madelinesclore.com slash chat list. And it's also on the homepage on the sidebar. It's easy to find. So okay. yeah, I definitely recommend that. And but best place to reach me, Twitter. Absolutely. Come right. tweet me. <laughs> tell me you're listening to the podcast and I will... I will, I'll hit the little love button. I will respond. (laughs) I check my notifications probably a hundred times a day. Uh, so I'm at, at Madeline Sklar. I have an unusual name, so everything is my name. I okay. can get everything my name. So MadelineSklar.com and Twitter's at Madeline Sklar. Terrific. That's awesome. I love it. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today and sharing all your best tips with us, Madeline. Thank you for having me, Luann. It was a real pleasure. Thank you for joining me again today for another episode of A Well-Designed Business. This podcast is a production of Window Works in Livingston, New Jersey, your trade resource for custom window treatments and awnings. Learn more about Window Works at www.windowworks-nj.com. All of our music is original music by Room 2 Productions. Please contact us if you want to learn more about original music for your business or your events.